Hello, good evening. My name is Elias Munsha. I'm coming to you from Calgary, Alberta. I'm coming to you live from Munsha Law. And so thank you that you could join me. Today, I'm going to uh, give as much time as possible for us to share uh, with as many people as possible because we are going to talk about principles of interpreting the constitutional text, principles of um, interpreting the constitutional text. What principles should we apply when we are interpreting the constitutional statutes? Okay, uh, please share with as many people as possible uh, because it's going to be a very lively and, and interesting discussion. I have tea with me and so in Zambia, Chuempala, it's about 21 hours right now. So um, you should be getting ready for bed if you're not already in bed, okay? My tea is hot, for goodness sake. Very, very hot, okay? So my lecture today will be on principles of interpreting the constitution. The reason why we must talk about principles of interpreting the constitution is in view of the Nkunika and Nirenda case and why I continue to register my grievance, okay, uh, towards the, the, the decision of the Constitutional Court in the Nkunika case. Um, yes, I'm, I'm still aggrieved. The reason is the Nkunika case does not, does not make sense. It does not, it's not a very fair decision. It's not a very fair decision in the sense that it does not do justice to how our country needs to be interpreting the constitution. The problem with the Concord's decision in the Nkunika case is, is it strikes at the heart of constitutional interpretation. What can the courts do and what the courts cannot do when, interpre when interpreting the constitutional text? That is where the issue is, okay? So we need to perhaps start this from the very beginning. The constitution says what it says. The constitution does not say what it does not say. The beginning point when interpreting any constitutional text is the text itself. What? does it say? That is the beginning point of any constitutional interpretation. What does the text of the constitution say? What is the language of the constitution? Before you come up with things that you think are right, read the text. Constitution 2016 says the following, that a person who aspires to be a councillor, MP or president must have as their minimum education, a grade 12 um, certificate or its equivalent. That is the natural meaning, minimum grade 12. The term minimum implies that there is a range of qualifications with grade 12 at the minimum and other tertiary and university qualifications at the end. Minimum grade 12 and then maximum perhaps is a PhD degree. That is what the constitution says. That is the text of the constitution. Meaning it's a range of qualifications that should make a person to qualify as president, the as president or MP or councillor. The constitution did not say that the only qualification is the grade 12 certificate. If the constitution had said that the only qualification is grade 12, it would have said that in clear and unambiguous terms, for example, the constitution says you have to be a Zambian citizen. That is clear and unambiguous. The constitution says you must be at least 21 years of age for MP. That is clear and unambiguous. 
when the constitution says it is a range of qualifications, then that is what the constitution says. And what is the range? And the constitution being the constitution, it gave the minimum. It said the minimum is grade 12, and then that's a range up to whatever is the maximum. Indeed, this is exactly what Justice Ichinga ruled in the Sibongile Zulu and Attorney General case. Because, because this is not new. It started in 2016. Justice Sichinga wrote to say, according to the text of the Constitution itself, it gave a range of qualifications with a grade 12 certificate being the minimum, and other qualifications could be the maximum. The concern I have is that by the Constitutional Court, okay, interpreting the constitution in the way it has interpreted the constitution it has it is it is it is it is giving a very bad precedent the reason why it is a very bad precedent is that this decision is going to be depended upon in future to answer other constitutional questions that we are going to have now these questions might not relate to the grade 12 certificate these questions might be related to something else using the reasons that they have used in the Kunika case, they could depend on this kind of interpretation for future interpretations. That is the problem that I have with the Kunika case. Okay? That is the major issue. Uh, <laughs> here is the reason. The reason is where parliament as far as the constitution is concerned, intends to exclude a class of citizens from participating in the governance of their country, parliament must be clear and straightforward. When parliament intends to exclude the citizens in a constitution, it must be clear where parliament is vague, curing that vagueness or ambiguity should be cured to the benefit of the majority of the people in Zambia. What I'm calling an inclusive approach, meaning the constitution is vague. How do you cure it? You cure it in an inclusive manner rather than exclusive manner because if the constitution wanted to be exclusive, it would have said so in very clear and unambiguous terms. Okay? That is the issue we have here. Parliament is not clear. Parliament has left it vague. When you take it to court, a court must interpret constitutional statutes in a way that is more inclusive rather than exclusive. The problem is if you allow this kind of approach to constitutional interpretation, what it will mean is that even in future, when you take different questions before the constitutional court, they are still going to use this exclusive approach and this exclusive approach is going to, 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 to exclude more citizens rather than include more citizens. So, so the court had no duty, the court had no business excluding more citizens to interpret constitutional statute that is ambiguous and vague. If this constitution, if the intention of parliament was that grade 12 was their qualification, again, let me repeat this. If that is what the constitution had intended or had said, it would have said it in very unambiguous terms. Here is the language. It would have said that in order for you to be an MP, you need to have the grade 12 certificate. That is clear. That is unambiguous, and that excludes all other people with other qualifications. But that is not what Parliament says. 
Parliament tells us it's a range. If it's a range, then it is a range. When instead of taking a range, you go in and choose the minimum, what has happened is that you have therefore not followed what Parliament says, what the text of the Constitution says. You are just saying things that are convenient. Most of you people on Facebook are probably grade 12, right? Because very rarely would you have non-grade 12s on, uh, on Facebook. And so you look at it and you think this is okay. This is good law because we need people who are grade 12. We are grade 12s and everything. That's okay. But that is not how you read the constitution. The constitution is a governing law for every Zambian. Meaning if it is vague, it has to be interpreted in a way that is as inclusive of every Zambian as possible, not as exclusive. Until you create a constitution that has a text in it that is completely exclusive, you cannot begin excluding and denying other Zambians of the right that the constitutional text itself has not in a clear language and in clear terms excluded. Because today it begins with Inkunika. Tomorrow it could be other, other rights. And they're going to be interpreted in a way that is exclusive. This is, this is what we mean when we say <laughs> there is something wrong with Inkunika. Justice Sichinga's decision was on point. It was correct. But what the Corn Court has ruled and what Electoral Commission of Zambia has now said does not make sense. It is not, it is unfaithful to the constitutional text. I don't care how many of you want grade 12. If you gentlemen want grade 12 to be the only qualification, you would have passed a law that said grade 12 is the only qualification. You did not. You cannot do indirectly what you failed to do directly. You did not pass a law that says that only grade 12 uh, certificates. You use the language of minimum. So I really, I really don't care <laughs> what, 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 you, what you think, right? Because we've got to be faithful to the text of the constitution. And if there is any vagueness in the constitution, we've got to interpret the constitution in a way that includes as many citizens as possible. Okay, that is, that is what the constitution says. Now, the other thing about the Kunika case is, uh, it, the last paragraph, for example, it states some things that are just not true. Now, I have told you several times that there is usually a discrepancy sometimes between factual truth and legal truth. If Nkunika wants to uh, give us the legal truth that is going to be different from the factual truth, it's okay. I'm okay with that. But we've got to look at the reasoning. The Nkunika case is saying, the, the Nkunika case is saying that, that tertiary education is not equal in value and in time with a grade 12 education. <laughs> now, that is, that is factually untrue. You see that? The reason is a 12 year, a grade 12 certificate does not mean that a person has been in school for 12 years. Common sense. A grade 12 education, a grade 12 certificate does not mean that somebody has been in school for 12 years. The other thing is, university education could actually keep you in school for 12 years. So it does not make sense to reject university education, which lacks grade 12 by saying that university education is not equivalent to a grade 12 education, when grade 12 education can be had in a year or even in months 
which means a person that has never been to grade one can sit for grade 12 or can sit for GCE, for a general certificate of education, and study for general certificate of education within months and pass it. If a GCE education that a person can sit for within months and pass will qualify that person to be an MP, why can't university education without a grade 12 qualify as well as sufficient education to qualify a person as an MP? Using the reasoning of the Nkunika case. Again, my contention is not that we do not need grade 12 education. My contention is that when the constitutional court is interpreting constitutional text, it cannot interpret vague provisions in a way that excludes not even one of our citizens. No. Now, is it true that there are some people in Zambia that have university degrees without grade 12? Yes. They are there. Even if they are a small number, they are still our citizens. Unless parliament clearly passes a law which excludes those degree holders without grade 12, the constitutional court cannot exclude them. So what are these people who do not have a grade 12 certificate and yet they have university degrees? I'm going to give you several of them. Number one, graduates from Chalimbana School of Education. Chalimbana had for many years been admitting grade nines to become teachers. One of them is Kenneth Kaunda and Simon Mwansaka Puepo and several of their friends. They ended in grade nine. Then they went to Chalimbana. They took certificates and diplomas in teaching. They went teaching. Some of Kaunda's friends, after graduating from Chalimbana and, and, um, and um, teaching for several years, they went to the University of Zambia using work experience and their certificates from Chalimbana and their grade nine education, and they started doing university degrees. Some of them ended up with master's and doctorate degrees. Chalimbana, Mindolo Ecumenical Foundation, Mindolo Ecumenical Foundation and School of Journalism was for years admitting some grade nines and grade tens and some of the failures of grade 12 to do journalism for many years. Some of these journalists, they completed uh, 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 journalism education certificates from Mindolo. They completed their education. They started working for our country. And after that, they went on using their certificates from Mindolo uh, uh, Ecumenical Foundation to do degrees in journalism, masters in journalism, some of them PhDs in journalism. They are there in our country. Let's talk about Zen, Zambia Enrolled Nursing. Some of the nursing schools for many years, they were admitting Zens. Zens were being admitted sometimes. Uh, uh, these were people that did very well in grade 12. Some of them had not done very well in grade 12. They got enrolled in Zambia enrolled nursing. They were Zens. During the Michael Sata uh, ministership, Michael Sata opened a way for Zens to go into registered nursing. So they went into registered nursing. They sat for uh, the first exams, whatever they call them, competency exams. They passed them, went, became registered nurses. And after registered nurses, some of them went to do masters in public health and they are there. So I've given you teachers I've given you journalists, I've given you examples. Let's talk of, 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 um, of, of engineers, ZIT. Some of the people that went to ZIT were grade 12 graduates. Some of them were not. ZIT started as Zambia Institute of Technology. It was a technologically oriented education. Some of the people who went to ZIT did not have grade 12. However, they went and did practical trainings at ZIT. From there, they then went into university. When that thing was translated into Copper Belt University, it brought some of the graduates from ZIT to do diplomas, university diplomas. They are there in our country. 
What about Evelyn Horn College? What are the entry requirements for Evelyn Horn College programs? What are the entry requirements for, for NOTEC, Northern Technical College? Which means we do have citizens in our country who have tertiary and university education without a grade 12 certificate. Unless parliament clearly says that they are going to not re to recognize this as eligible to be members of parliament and lawmakers, a court cannot disqualify these citizens. That is our bone of contention. This idea of saying that Zambia does not have people that have degrees without grade 12 is just false. It is not true. <laughs> what about lawyers? What about lawyers? Now, I find it, I find it extremely offensive. The reason why I find it offensive is because, is because it looks like you. <laughs> You are not respecting history you, and common sense. It is simple. The first batch of Zambian lawyers did not even have LLBs. They did what is known as clerkship. Clerkship means that you are a student with a law firm. And then after five years, you go and challenge Ziale exams and you become a lawyer. That's what the earliest cadre of Zambian lawyers were. They were not form fives. So, can a person be a professional? Can a person be a lawyer? Can, do we have lawyers in Zambia that never had form five? Yes, we do. Do we have lawyers in Zambia that never, that never had LLB degrees? Yes, we do. Do we have uh, teachers in Zambia that never had grade 12? Yes, we do. Do we have journalists in Zambia that never had grade 12? Yes, we do. Do we have engineers? Yes, we do. Now, what is the issue with those people? They are educated, extremely educated. If parliament intended to exclude them, parliament would have been very clear in the language it used. Parliament did not use that language, therefore they cannot be excluded. <laughs> you know, some of you are thinking that I'm saying this because I do not have grade 12. I do have grade 12. It is not about me. My only duty is to speak for some people that get embarrassed by the kind of official war. Even when reality is different, we are boasting Nanjala. We are boasting out of, an, um, out of not abundance, but shortage. We think that shortage is good. We think that insulting or looking down on our fellow citizens is good. It's not. That's how I do. If I want, if I want, if I want to stand, I'll go. I'll go. I have my certificate and seven additional degrees. I have grade seven, grade nine, and grade twelve. It is not about me. It is about consistency with constitutional interpretation. First of all. Secondly, it is just common historical reality that in Zambia, we do have wonderful citizens that have degrees and they don't have grade 12. They are our citizens. We are proud of them. They have done a lot of good things in their country and for their country. This attitude of insulting such people is completely uncalled for and intolerable. We can't tolerate it. If this constitution wanted to exclude Kenneth Kaunda, it would have clearly said that it's going to exclude people like Kenneth Kaunda with a grade nine education. It did not. It said it's a range of qualifications. Justice Sichinga was right in the Sibongi Lezulu case. The other, the other confusion is 
How can we allow a constitutional interpretation that excludes threats? This is not a constitutional text. What I'm talking about is a constitutional interpretation that excludes threats. <laughs> How can we exclude vocational um, the trained people? If the Constitution wanted to exclude the trades people, it would have clearly and categorically said so. It did not. If it doesn't, a court is supposed to err towards inclusion rather than exclusion. That's what it is. So, so, so I'm, I'm not going to sit back and just let this thing slide. While a good, I don't know how many they are though, that these people with, uh, with higher education without grade 12, I don't know how many they are. But I'm not just going to sit back and see them being maligned. And I sit back. For what? Why would I do that? I'm also, when, when, when something like this is being said and spoken, it reminds me of my own very modest roots growing up in Chiwembala. That I went to Chingola Secondary School and my, at my, high, uh, my secondary education, not because I was any more special than my friends who ended in grade 10 or grade 11. By just a very small thing, I would also not have completed my high school. It was just by the hard work of my aunt, a marketeer at Chuempala uh, uh, Market, who helped pay for my school. And I cannot tolerate this thing of people come to Facebook and they begin laughing at people who ended up in grade 11 for the not for the fault of their own. No. Some of them ended in, 11, in grade 11, but they've done several things. They went to vocational schools. They went to trade schools. They improved themselves. They passed attitude, uh, aptitude tests to go to some colleges, and now they have degrees. And now you are telling me that they cannot represent Chuempala or Chingola due to a vague interpretation of the constitution. No, if this constitution wanted to exclude those people, it would have said clearly that it, those people are going to be excluded. There would be no trouble here. There'll be no, 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 I wouldn't even be here talking. Why would I be here talking? The constitution has not excluded them. Why should the court exclude them? If this constitution wanted to exclude them, it would have said categorically that if you ended in grade 11, but somehow you found yourself having a degree or having a professional uh, qualifications, you went to accounts, you passed accounts and somehow you ended up with a degree, then you are excluded. The constitution should have said so. It did not. Why should the court disqualify them? <laughs> you tell me. A grade 12 education in Zambia, is a, it's not a matter of brilliance at all. It's a matter of ishuko. That's what it is. It's not a matter of brilliance. Now, you want to interpret that in grade 12, from grade, grade, grade 1 to grade 12, most of you people have no control whatsoever about the opportunities. Never. You don't have control over it. You are young. You complete high school at 16 years of age. Several socioeconomic factors are at play. My friends who did not make it, I almost also did not make it. I was extremely bright. Almost did not make it. It was because of an aunt of mine, Mayosenge. 
tuare kuka kuka. No kuberenga na le berenga na muri koloboy. Kwa shele fi so. No, now so many of those people who did not make it, they bettered their lives. They bettered themselves. They went to school. And then today, because of a vague thing in the constitution, we want to exclude them as a matter of uh, interpretation, the, using the court to exclude people that parliament has not excluded. No. <laughs> that is the problem to go there with this kind of interpretation. Grade 12 in Zambia is a matter of chance. It's not a matter of opportunity. No, because... because 90% of Zambians have no opportunity to go up to grade 12. Never. They don't. It's not just about us, Muma, Muma urban areas. The constitution should cater for each and every citizen equally. And as long as we don't have those opportunities for each and every child in Zambia, um, but by child, I mean a child from 1 to 16 years old because grade 12 is 16 or 17. Most of you have no control over your socioeconomic affairs. And today I am going to begin mocking those people. No, it's a state of an emergency. It's a sad state of affairs. We need to mourn over this and not be celebrating. If you're on my timeline, Ulesse Kavan Toba Shapasa Grade 12, you can get out of my timeline. <laughs> I'm serious. It's, not, uh, it's a very sad situation. Because of my own background, my own background, it's personal. My friends in Chuempala, it's not because they had no brands. No. There were only three secondary schools in the entire Chingola, Kabundi, Chikola, and Chingola. The entire Chingola. Three secondary schools. 300,000 people. Maybe 100,000 16-year-olds. I don't know. I can't know the figures. So just by the numbers, already we were limited. Now, to think that all those people are only good to vote for you, and they are not good to stand for, for electoral office, is ridiculous, particularly when the constitution has not excluded them. That is my contention. To a show kid of ye. Take over to a requati shaman of Chilava Nenso of a shapashide. To a show kid of ye, this show of ye. No great seven now pass a pacha, paria pacha, pachicola, patuatasha primary school. It was it because I was more brainy than my friends of a shapashide. Ero no mbale longa na kwata grade 12 certificate na kwata na 7 degrees. Ntampe kukula tuka. The, 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 the other people who did not make it. Not because of, of anything about a man. Who did not make it because the quality chance. Qualify three secondary schools in the entire chingon. <laughs> no one. Nga mlefu huko tuka wa grade 12. Ngale first tuale ene ama grade 12 to everywhere. Pakoba tu muntu mwine, haba feni choice yakwe. Na wati vifia koba ti opportunities were completely rigged. Eno namba muise muko yumfu wati you have grade 12. Omule yumfu wati you have degrees or anything. No, constitution must be as inclusive as particularly when it's vague. Na mule each time interpret it vague. Kwa each time interpret has to include as many people as possible. If if you have constitution or court, yambe go could start interpret constitution in a way that excludes as many people as possible is nonsense. Today it's education, tomorrow it will be health. <laughs> At what is the minimum requirement? The minimum requirement po malaria. That's what they'll do next time. Some, some are telling me, okay, but the reason why we need a grade 12 certificate is because of forging. I'm like, that is completely, that, that reason. I Now, now, I didn't go to your strong language, Pantonineshima people. But let me tell you, that reason is nonsense. 
It's complete nonsense. To say that the reason why you are insisting on grade 12 is because a higher education is forged. Forgery is a criminal offense. So you cannot use the fear for a criminal offense to be the reason why you are going to exclude thousands and thousands of people with genuine college education without grade 12. You can't do that. You can't say because quality of counterfeit uh, higher education, education, therefore, we are going to exclude all these citizens of our country with genuine qualifications from Chalimbana. They went to Unza, they went to they 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 went overseas, they 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 are educated. And you say that you're going to exclude them because there is a fake university in Matero that offers fake qualifications. That is not right. The fact that they are counterfeits does not mean that then the genuine qualifications must be must not be adopted. Our country has so many people that excel without a grade 12 education. What do you do? You help, you give them aptitude tests when they are coming to university. If they pass the aptitude test, you give them lessons. They 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 learn, they, they have diplomas, they have degrees. That is what national development is. And if the constitution want to exclude them, if we are in black and white, at Ababa and Tuaba, Tuaba Kana, Muaba Kana, we know, we know clear, Muaba Chinga, in the constitution. Number, Tamuba Chingi, the constitution. Chidamuwa mwona tifi ndi tafiwe menomba. Elu mwaya landati yu mwaya tuwaba chinga. Nga chinshi mwaba chingira. Constitution hini tayaba chinga. Epa liu mwafi apa. Constitution ya landa it's a range of qualification. Which means uliomu nandi wapo nene mgrade 11. Elu nomba haya iti tayi improve. Haya nga nkuma account kulia practical shani SCCA ya musumina. Apasa. Elo le elo mulanda tiyo iwe mulumendo te ju teke. Ah, di pass if my SCCA, but grade 2 of Taku Ah, di pass if my SCCA. Atiyo te ju teke. Uriya nasi, uwa ile kuzen. Elo no mba fia ya londolo kabu ino. Uwa ba nasi, te te ateke. Te te alandi echi sungu mparlament, nasi. Iyo ba ne. Ngata mule fuwa ya bantu. Kulanda, mwalemba, clear, black and white. Taba mikanya, kulembe funde. When we say rule of law, we mean kulembe funde. Chitia mwali lemba. Awo mule foku chita exclude. Mwalemba, black and white. Taba, tamule wa fuwaya. Mwalemba. Mwali lemba, okwebati, minimum age is 21. Mwali lemba, okwebati, minimum age is 35. Mwari lemba okweba atika nori mwina Zambia. Chion safe very clear. Na pama sambi liro pene. Mwari lemba okweba ati umuntu poko wati ateke. Afuira kwa tama sambi liro. Aya atampa. Hmm? Aya okweba ati yali, yali, yali between. <laughs> Grade 12 certificate na doctorate. Efyo mwalanda. Nomba chidafiaka kana te kuya nombo kuya vika kwa maspana spana kubantu waba atolweke grade 12. Ebu wafia gulipo. Abantu waba atolweke grade 12. Ukutoloka grade 12. Ngarakuti na constitution tayale fuwaya abantu waba atoloka grade 12. Ngayari lando kweba atitatule fuwaya aba atoloka grade 12. Tevyo ya landa yo. Bambi yuko toloka grade 12, umulandu, if you are HT kafie, kari nika 15 year old akamuwa hicheba ya nina naba wishbafuwa na ngubalanda. Bafi wuku kadipiti na ma examination fees ya grade 12. Elo chidi ya kakula kwino kwino kwa womba womba koto chito tumo tumo. Eh? Kale sungi ni rolu pia kaya muko hiripiti la accounts. SCA ya kapela. Kaba nika accountant. Mwise mkane ukweba atiyo mkwa ekwekena moe mku chita biology. <laughs> Adi you can't debate in parliament. What nonsense. <laughs> Defo ya mwenje weko. <laughs> Ata you should play a song for P.K. Chala. Imagine. Na P.K. Chala wine cannot be MP. Under these rules. <laughs> I 
Atinga pano what is happening. Na ibeba ni mfuluwa. At the share our country, Vanachiota kids. It's a country of if uh, Giving the impression kwa nakalimo mka vashovo muntu kwa nakalimo vaa mfuluwa. That is not how nations develop. Uh, why is this important when the Dan Concord has ruled just as it did in Dan de Pulegas? No. <laughs> David, Tefimofine. Okay? I need another uh, time to come and explain why Tefimofine is not This is not the same. Those of us seek employment regardless of the position at times require for us to have a grade 22. Okay? Uh, let the people with grade 12 certificates to vote them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you see, this is this is how absurd this thing is because you are insisting at grade 12 so that people can debate properly. About to look at grade 12, they can't debate properly. And yet you want all citizens in Zambia to be voters. It's inconsistent with the very reasoning that you are putting behind. Eh? If you are going to constitution, you are going to be a constitution. Let the constitution say it in black and white to cover That's 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 our argument. So do you have a grade 12 certificate? Yes, I do. Mui shuko. Di shuko fie. Now what is a grade 12? My aunt, in Mpala. Varejitisha kombo pachwe mpala market. Na fimo fimo. Ok? Elu na shuka na kwata great officer. Elu no mba ini ntampi ukula pontera hava aponene. On the great officer, I'm, I'm misguided. I don't know. I'm misguided in what sense? All I'm saying is simple. If you guys want great of Kalembeni constitution and you put it in black and white, you are excluding our Toloka great of. That's it. You haven't said so. Titus Musonda Mwape. At Sangwa says they were not qualified. I walked to a pela Sangwa in Sambu. Munje de Rekobate. I didn't go to a pela con in Sambu. Pantu, this is not a good ruling. Gunika Neni Renda case. It's not a good ruling, not only because it's not a good ruling because it does not make sense. If it and did ever, and Tafide Panga sense. Uh, Terence Chibula. Now, the, the issue about Chibula is uh, when we say intention of parliament, here is the thing. The problem, okay, with the intention of parliament, therefore, particularly law students, because I'm interested in law students and those Avakote that want to become lawyers, okay? I know about Terence Chibula, I'm a lawyer, but here is the issue. What is the intention of parliament? The intention of parliament is expressed in the text that they write. It is not in what they were thinking, but in what they actually wrote. In other words, if you went to consult documents that were done as they were making a law, it could mislead. So the best thing to do, the first thing is to read the text. The text says minimum grade 12 and it's equivalent. That is what the law says. Now, the Kunika case says that the intention of parliament was to have parliamentarians who could actually debate in parliament. If that is the intention of parliament, to have parliamentarians who could debate in parliament, how does it then square with the fact that a person who skips grade, grade 12 but has a degree cannot be an MP. Because a person who skips grade 12 and has a degree could, in fact, be able to debate in parliament. 
And that's why if you took the perspective of the intention of parliament, then a person that has been to university without a grade 12 qualifies them to stand as a member of parliament. Because the intention of parliament is not just the paper of a grade 12. The intention of parliament is to have parliamentarians who are able to debate and articulate issues. And so my submission is that people like Kenneth Kaunda with a grade nine education are able to articulate issues in parliament. And so because the constitution is vague and unclear, it should give these people a benefit of doubt until such a time that you as a parliament deliberately exclude these people. That is what intention of parliament is. So, so can these journalists without grade 12, can these lab technicians without grade 12, can these tradespeople without grade 12 be able to debate in parliament? Yes, they can. But how does one uh, require acquire a qualification without meaning? I've already explained this. It is not true that grade 12 is the only qualification for university. That is not a true world over. And it is not a true even in Zambia. If this grade 12 thing is becoming an issue, it is only becoming an issue this year or yesteryear. The truth of the matter is universities in Zambia have been admitting people about Toloka grade 12. I've given you sufficient examples. They are there. And without explicit language that forbids these people in the constitution, the constitutional court cannot exclude them. That is our contention. Sir, your legal opinions are sound to us, the laymen, who are legally blind, but come home and see if you can pass at Ziale. Then surely we can consider your opinions wholly. But going by your style, Tate Mupite Paziale, boss, that could be a, a good um, a reason. But let me address the Ziale issue uh, for a bit. Um, the first constitution that was left by the British, so lawyers, I'm a lawyer, Baba Sungu, um, Constitution to Ashire. <laughs> but anyway, Constitution in 1964 to about 1973, it was, an, it was not a controversial constitution. Um, the constitution, then Avena Kaunda Basa changed a constitution in 1971 or 72. Basa changed and Zambia became a one party state. Then in 1991, they also changed. The issues with the constitution of Zambia has nothing to do with me. It is not about me. The controversies surrounding the constitution of Zambia has nothing to do with Elias Monsha. When this constitution started being a problem under the Second Republic, <laughs> when the 1991 constitution was being passed, the Mvunga Constitutional Commission, Nishariko, I was in grade seven at Tuatasha Primary School. When the constitution in 1996 was being revised, Nishariko, Teine. Do not make the controversies regarding the constitution about me. It is not about Elias Munsha. Ninelawaya Waba Sungu. It has nothing to do with me. Even if you took me out of the picture, you would still have all these controversies. So it is not one baby. <laughs> when the 1996 constitution was being an grade 12 at Chingola Secondary School, when the court cases were being taken, the inefficiencies of this constitution has everything to do with the Zambian politicians and Zambian lawyers. You are going to judge me on the basis of the contribution I make to the nation of Zambia, which right now is, is helping. That is, that is all there is here. 
But do not make this as a battle somewhat between me and my colleagues of the Zambian bar. It is not a battle between me and the colleagues of the Zambian bar. In fact, the constitution itself throughout these years has been drafted by members of the Zambian bar. The vagueness, the complexity, the confusion has been by the Ziale and uh, the members of the Zambian bar. It is not me. <laughs> I'm not a judge. I'm not a Zambian uh, legal practitioner. I'm not a judge. I'm not a Zambian legal practitioner. I'm neither of these things. But there is confusion. I did not cause this confusion. <laughs> eh? Okay. Whether I can contribute differently. Cash next constitution. If we're my lawyers, Baba Sungu, Tuka Pange. For, for, uh, I, I think I think Ziale has had its own share number. We we've got to use CIPLET, the Canadian um, um, uh, Institute. I agree with you. So no. Ne waka ere. Mwachaya number two. Er number mlefuko kushinga ine at the end engere. Nakana. Nimwe. This is this is your issue. So when you are dealing with problems, deal with them. As a nation, you know, very level-headed and clear-mindedness. Muira be pesha be pesha avantu. Nava shidi iko. 1973, nishadi iko. 1991, nishadi iko. 1996, nishadi iko. Na hine 2016, nishadi iko. I hope, I hope that helps you, aye? Eh? It is so sad that as a country, let me go back to the to this yearly question. But <clears throat> I think we shouldn't blame Zambian lawyers. I think the problem is Zambian politicians. Because Tabon Fua. I'm a lawyer as Bala Beba. At if you mule become constitution, they are not making sense, but they still go ahead and sign it. L look at the cyber bill. The law association of Zambia went to to the parliament, I'm a parliamentarian, no kubeba. At if you mule bika muli cyber security bill, fia wupuwa. About you, if you fi ne fia wupuwa, if you tule fwaya. And tomorrow you'll be blaming Zambian lawyers at ever alenga. Elong, after much time blame mama Zambian lawyers number. When some go to blame, in ne lawyer waba sungwa di nwewa alenga. Iyo obane. Deal with the issues as they are. Mwe tu bika mo, mufi ota tuishibe. Mwe chaya namba tu. Elo mwisa mutu shinge ati nifuwe vo tu chaide. <laughs> anyway, seven minutes. Yeah. Um, Mumba Junior Bali. Junior Bali, waumfu hai? Waumfu? Ife idea shiride enda. Aba nove, warefu oku mbepe shati ninevo na adenga. Kui? Eh, na mfini koti ya makamu zambia nisha ingira, na ingira mofie ukutamba ko, if you watch the event. I'm not a judge, I'm not a Zambian legal practitioner, ine nebo loya wako wa sungu. Ave ine baafi buandaika buandaika, ati mwonsha ni wewa alenga. Wama, <laughs> fuwewa kulo omotu. Iyo, na mulefuwa ya tindenge kanshi, muka ampere constitution inka lembe. Nganalemba, Monsha Constitution Review Commission, Ero Mukan Show, the Okova at Monifi watched. Number, as long as I am a constitution, Nimwemulemba. Vague language, Nimwemulemba. I'm a lawyer, I'm here, but if you have a puba, maybe it's okay. <laughs> That's what President Lungu is saying, that it's okay, na I sign a cyber view. I'm a lawyer, that no, but if he, this is not making sense, that no, we are going to sign it nevertheless. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness, you cannot change. No, you can't. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't. If you landa, to landa, landa. You can't change them. But if you are not helped, you can't change the constitutional That's it. You can't change the constitutional court. Now, if you are not helped, case. They've ruled. We, we are going to be, to be guided. <laughs> Yeah, we are going to be guided. Mm. 
Um, it's not the con concord. No, it's the concord. Please, the constitution itself does not say what you are th thinking it says. Uh, do you have a grade 12 certificate? I've already answered that question. Oko fula mano pachintu wingi vala pono naka. Okay. That's, that's a very fair uh, statement. Alevo mpono na. Uh, last Mushalo of a fair, fairness fear. What is the solution to the matter? The solution is that um, uh, uh, since Nkunika case has not ruled on minimum, Muntu work with a degree, but I should grade 12, can still qualify. Katwish, number is it Naikana? Kuista sue. Just sue them and uh, and go back to the Concord to come for a Concord to Karand. I want. <laughs> Barishtama degree nama masters, the fear authentic. Oh. Uh, fundamentals are wrong in our country. That's why we are talking. Pokovati. Mwika and that's that walandire. Ejo to lerandi na mulan wokovati. There is a diversity of voices. Yeah. This is the same court you have been supporting over eligibility. The one they get the eligibility. Give me power of attorney once you have prepared the petition. I will take it. Oh, okay. I think we can work on it. But it, there has got to be somebody injured. And I'm not injured because I do have grade twelve. So there's got to be somebody who has a grade twelve, or got a degree, a master's, na a PhD, and they want to be MPs. Those are the ones that should sue. Like the way Sibongi le sued, right? Um, with Justice Chinga. Justice Chinga's decision was pretty good and on point. That's a constitutional ruling. LSAG Chingola secondary times were very high. Even I did have a 28 G. Daria Spiri. 28 G. Eh, hey, that was it, GI. Now, did I have a mom? You made me laugh. You are not the cause. Eh, hey, eh? Um, Mwanagambwa, te ine, balembe pesha ati ni ine, eh? Eh? Ati, 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 when you were a lawyer, wava sungu, nuwe wawa to the tereda, kuisa, mwevo. Eh? Constitution of Asungu Bashire. It was good from 1964 to 1970. The quality of Wafia Constitution of Asungu. Eh? Chijakwa Wafia Tio Munshani Wevo. Eh? Nakana. Hm? Namlefo Ika Vini problem yand. Mukampere. Nkalembe. Nka Anson Nkalemba. Very clear. Nama constitutional principles in Kavika Mo. When you are interpreting, give people rights, not to pocket it, or to pocket it, or to kanya kanya, or to chinga chinga. No, chalo. This is a country for everyone. Ka village, akumirengi, tonse tulia, tuine tuwa Zambia, tuine. Katamula tupela grade two of mui tu chinga yo. Ngale tu pere ni ama grade two of tonse tu sambiri. Elo nomba mukarete kwe vifionse. Elo nomba mukarete chinfulunganya. Not now. Eh? Ba machua yapa ya ati ya kushita. <laughs> it's okay. No? It's okay for you to feel like that at ba machua ba shita fia. It's okay. But we think about constitution in these little uh, quarrels. It's okay. Ogulanda tawawa machua, they are not good, Shani. It's okay. Now, if you feel like chingola to alikuete, it's five schools. Na chanda three. Indeed, they were five. Kuali, called Sacred Heart Convent School. El was an adult education. You don't say it in the same street. So, kuali koka yaka idea kako bati. Haba pa convent. Bale, chita Shani. At bale, sambidi, the few land, they are, they had money. If you tuwa heba, muna ba Sacred Heart Convent. Pushe, do we have a Sacred Heart Convent up? Ha, they were not part of, of true education, a sacred art convent. 
na baada <laughs> and it's okay nomba te kuletera mu constitution mufya upuba and it to bickering and suspicions ya bantu awe kala chalo they can do that you know sibling rivalry if you feel like bundi if of ever bachingola secondary school we were on top hmm Shalande was second between Chikola and Kapundi. No. But if we as Chingola, so in an alef makuchue mpara, kuchi umai kudire, ukuya kuchingola. Secondary school. That was pretty wonderful. To a leum for win. You know what I mean? Number. Uh, when I say that, tekule tera monomba, what we felt, you know, the immaturity, the confusion, uku yumfua. Ichilumba, all that. Ukuletela nomba kuisa, mu constitution. No, because the constitution governs everybody. Mama. So if you want to ukushoba wa machua, it's okay kutumulewa shoba wa machua. But do not use the constitution ukuvachinga wa machua. Don't do that. <laughs> ah. hmm. Anyway. Thank you very much. I wanted to get this off the chest. Number apo chapwa nishi. I think na alanda sana paliri ishu na areka. Tukalanda kofimbi on another day. If you feel grade 12, I'm done with this thing. It's just making me look old. One. Ndeko. No kukota na akota in two days of talking about grade 12. No mwane. Ne para. Na mwane. Na mwane. Ne para. Eh? Because of this great 12 thing. Nepal had ya fu mepal. Mlandua great 12. Naleka. Na kula landa kofimbi. If you sumi fia kovati, fia rampera kwa emishishi. Anyway, thank you very much Zambia. Um... No, I can of Zambian members of the bar. No, they think fear change. Zambia has changed. Zambians have gone all over the world. They are dominating in the whole parts of the world. So, in we take over that chat. In I became a lawyer. Kuno kuine on Facebook. That's how I became a lawyer. Wa pa Facebook. <laughs> Number of you who control the thing to be very aware of the Munjaw Arenga, name Randa, Muimbe Pesha. I'm completely innocent. My politicians have a show for Kuma lawyers. If my politicians, a Vichin Tom for. If you have a damn lawyers, Baba, Imo if you mulch the Fiapo, they continue doing it. I don't mind what any Munjaw Arenga, name Randa. Okay? Thank you very much. God bless you and God bless our country.